<sighs> hey there, Runnerwebs, it's Monday, January 19th. The tongue is the fastest healing part of the body. I'm Russ. And I'm Eric. And this is Context Not Found. The holiday of the day is Martin Luther King Day. And this day in history, in 1937, Howard Hughes set a record by flying from Los Angeles, California to New York City in 7 hours, 28 minutes, and 25 seconds. One wonders how you get that many significant figures on an airline flight, given that they can't even get arrival and departure times correct half the time. hey -o! And I was getting a kick out of sitting here watching you try and pull up that tab because you had the auto-hide going on your taskbar, so whenever you went like, to hover over it, it just started keep, kept hiding on you again. Well, uh, the, the auto-hide wasn't the feature. The problem was uh, n navigating from uh, IFLS's site to Wikipedia and all of my other tabs. <laughs> Anywho. Yeah. So, what did you do over uh, the long holiday break? Work. Where do you work? A place. What did you do for work, I should ask? Uh, I did... Uh, I did electrical design for industrial electrical distribution systems. Well, aren't we fancy? I, ironically, did not work, because I only worked during the semesters at the Rockwall. You know, I'm I'm kind of sad. So, the nice little like can opening sound you heard at the beginning was me opening a can of Orange Crush, and I'm kind of sad because we keep our refrigerator so low that it actually, you know, sometimes it'll the low power or low temperature. Low temperature. Thank you. Must specify uh, that sometimes you'll get like a nice like crisp, slight iciness building on the top of the can so when you open it and you take that first sip it's kind of like a little bit of like a slushy iceness to it yeah that didn't happen this time and i'm kind of upset i don't know why we might have to overclock the refrigerator russ not again i mean we're al already overclocking the internet and the microwave and possibly the coffee maker coffee maker we haven't done the coffee maker yet That's mr coffee you're next yes frankenstein's coffee maker yeah, we have this thing in our room about, you know, literally getting the most possible out of everything, which in our case of, like, internet involves having, you know, a dedicated computer running dual LAN, you know, to funnel all of our internet traffic through and effectively double our throughput. We had an extension cord going to the accessories like the uh, microwave, the coffee maker, the refrigerator, you know, like the, the kitchenette setup, basically. And but... we were running so much current through that it was starting to, like, the, um, the extension cord was heating up enough that, like, you'd touch it and it felt warm. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah, we know we're running too much current through this. So I decided to make us a nice, um, I decided to make us a custom extension cord using some, like, you know, 14 gauge cable and, you know, 20 amp outlets. So, yes, now we can shove, you know, as much power as we want through that, you know, and the limiting factor is going to be the circuit breaker on the room. Yeah. To clarify, our uh, RA came in to do a room inspection once and looked at our uh, extension cord, and he's like, is that legal? And we said, well, according to Widener, rule, let, well, let's put it this way. The wiring in the walls will catch fire before this one does. And he's like, you guys are electrical engineers. I'm not. I trust you on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, I can't say what that... I can't say that claim with, you know, any certainty, because I don't know what gauge wire they're running in these walls, but, you know, <laughs> chances are that extension cord is, you know, the same as in the walls, if not better. This is, to clarify, these are uh, concrete cinder block walls and a stucco ceiling. I don't think they spring for heavy gauge wire. Springed. Eh, well, sprung. Sprang. Sprung. Sprung. Past sprung. Past. I don't think they sprung for heavy gauge wire. Yeah. Well, Might I mean, as well use one I know is wrong. Well, they are actually running, uh, these are actually 20 amp circuits in this room, actually. Um, because, well, at least I'm going to assume that they're 20 amp circuits because they have 20 amp outlets, you know, connected to the walls. So if they, you know, have actual 20 amp outlets running to a 15 amp circuit breaker, I'm going to just, like, shake my head disapprovingly. On the other hand, this is Widener. This is Widener, so I wouldn't put it past them. Bye. You might remember this. Have I told the story of the lampshade on the podcast? I don't think you have. 
settle in, good listeners. This is my sort of, you know, uh, what this is. This, this is, is the a, epitome of me bitching at Res Life, basically, for the next yes, five this, minutes. <laughs> this is this is Russ's like, you know, we biweekly rant against the RAs. Not biweekly, just you know, once ever someone hasn't heard it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, last year I lived in the best western across the street because Widener took in more residential students than they actually had res halls for. And they were doing room inspections once a week. Now... <laughs> Wait, actually, actually, I'm going to jump in on with something on that. So, um, he, he was in there for an entire academic year, so fall and spring semester. Yes. And ironically, um, I forget what it was, but um, I forget how exactly this happened, but I had a, a double room that I was in meant for two people, and my person just never showed up for some reason. I think they dropped out. I'm not entirely sure what happened there, but um, basically I was left with a single room. And so for the entire first, I mean, this was in the middle of the semester, so, you know, by this time when I'd meet up with Russ and say, hey, you should move in. So we weren't going to move in the middle of the semester, but then once the semester ended and winter break rolled around, we said, huh, you know what, this would be a good time to have you move in. Because they're actually, like, saying, hey, you guys, heads up, if you have free space, be prepared to take someone in. Um, so, we had to put up so much of a fight with Residence Life to try and get Russ moved in to the regular dorm, where it had space over winter break, uh, from the Best Western that they were spending extra money on. You, they should, Backtracking they should... even farther, I was in the <sighs> Best Western because they're terrible at communicating. Because the original plan was that we were going to room together sophomore year. However, because you weren't on campus fall semester due to co-op, they said we couldn't have... Or they said we couldn't have a uh, one person in a double, right? Yeah, it was just it was something weird like that. But they but... didn't tell us this until after we applied. So, now I'm looking for a roommate, last minute after everyone else has already picked theirs. So, I can't find a roommate, and it's like, fine, I'll just throw my name into the hat randomly, see who I get, hope for the best sort of thing. And when I go to fill out for a room, it's like, oh, by the way, we're out of rooms now. It's like, really? <laughs> <laughs> really, really? So, but yeah, so I mean, the, the, th the kicker that really gets me about that is the fact that, you know, we, wa we walked over to the office and like talked and like sat there in front of like the res life dean and said hey we want to move russ out of the best western this winter and into my room that i have space in <laughs> and you should think that they'd be like thanking us and like helping us yeah, with this process we've done the because, legwork for them yeah we've done all the legwork for them and like we're saving them money they don't have to rent out the you know best western room anymore it's like you you should be happy about this but no they they put up so much of a fight. Well, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, there's like technicalities, and there's yeah, like, apparently they signed a deal with the Best Western yeah. that said like people weren't going to move out of it. <laughs> yeah, it's like we're gonna rent these ro we're gonna rent these rooms for this amount of time, and like you know, blah blah blah. It's just, it's like, god damn it. <laughs> so, so, anyways, yes, that was my rant about trying to deal with Brez life. Moving now, back to now, our uh, now, Russ can continue with his little rant about back his to, bout with Res Life. Yeah, moving back to our weekly room inspections. Uh, was, it, hotels, was it weekly? Yeah, it was a weekly thing in the Best Western, just to make sure that the room wasn't on fire or whatever, because they don't own it. Yeah, which is increased security, increased risk, you know. But yeah, anyway. So um, you know how um, hotels have those uh sort of stock paintings on the walls. Yeah. And you can't take them down, because they're bolted onto the walls with L-brackets, so people don't steal the stock paintings. Not that anyone would ever want to own one of those. God, and no. You, <laughs> and you can't make them crooked anymore? Oh, that so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> but, so it's got these heavy-duty brackets, and I'm hanging my uh, whiteboard, the one with the little lip, off of the brackets sort of on the painting. And Res Life comes in and they tell me, I can't do that because it's going to like rip the painting off the wall or whatever. To clarify that I've been doing this already for, like, six months. <laughs> it seemed to be totally arbitrary when they decided I couldn't do this. So, for a little while at least, I said, okay. And the other thing is that they were doing weekly inspections, but they were doing them at a regular time, so I knew that before I left for work on Thursdays, I just had to take the, um, the thing down. Just had to take the whiteboard off and then leave for work, and then they'd inspect, say, okay, everything's good. And then come back from work, they would have done the inspections, and I put the whiteboard right back up again, and they're none the wiser. One day, 
I was in a hurry to leave for work. I forgot about it. I'm walking out the door as they're walking in, and they say, you can't have that whiteboard up. And it's like, uh, and I'm about to, you know, the, but then the hotel manager, who's also there doing the inspections, goes, oh, no, that's on heavy-duty L brackets. That's no risk of coming down. And I'm like, yes, they sided with me for once. Yes. But then the person doing the inspections is now in apparently a spiteful mood because she looks around, points to, okay, you know those, um, Chinese paper lanterns you make where you roll the paper into a cylinder and cut the slits in the uh, side. Well, I don't know why I'm asking this like hypothetically because you're looking at the lampshade right now, Eric, and my yes. the listeners can't respond yes well, you, or no. Well, you need you need, you need to paint the picture for the listeners because yeah. they can't physically see it. But go on. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google um, pause the video and Google Chinese paper lantern cylinder. It will probably come up. Anyway. Uh, she looks around and says that, which I have had literally on my lamp all year <laughs> to this point, and says, you can't have that, that's a fire hazard. And I say, why not? And she says, because it's a um, paper lampshade. Or no, it's because it was a homemade lampshade, so they didn't, you know, you put a piece of paper on a light bulb, it'll catch on fire, there's that risk, supposedly. And I'm Again, like, we're, we're going to clarify uh, supposedly, yes. but I'm go like, on. Like, <laughs> late for work, go, boom, <laughs> out the door. I come back from work, and literally within like five minutes of Googling, I find the manufacturer's uh, website for the light bulb, which, now here's the kicker, it is a 13-watt CFL. For those of you who don't know, you can turn that on for 16 hours and then grab it with your hand, and it will be, yeah, warm <laughs> But you're not going to burn yourself. Yes, you're still <laughs> not going to burn yourself, and Ray Bradbury fans know that paper combusts at 451 degrees Fahrenheit. The manufacturer's webpage for the light bulb says it will only reach surface temperatures of 131 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's a surface temperature. There is a large air gap between the lampshade and the light bulb. So I present all this information to ResLife at the next room inspection. They look at it and go, yeah, you've, you've certainly done your research. Very good for you. You still can't have it because it's a homemade paper lampshade. And I... <laughs> <laughs> I, love, and, I love the chicken noise, but go on. <laughs> Confused chicken. <laughs> but, so I eventually sort of regain my wits. I'm like, so you do acknowledge that I've provided... Hey, and it hit the trash can from here. Way to go. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, normally the trash can sits right in between the two desks here, so really I would just have to like pick my arm up to the left and place it in there, but for whatever reason, it's sitting across the room right now. Well, I was throwing out the whiteboard markers. Oh, yeah, that's right. But and you usually miss the trash can from closer distances, <laughs> I'd like to find. So you did very well. Well, no, because... You got a nice tight spiral on that can. Uh, no, no, you, you got you to gotta paint a more proper picture here, <laughs> because you, the way you say it makes me sound like I have terrible aim, which I don't necessarily have. I can. Clearly, you are shooting around a stack of books, I'll admit. <laughs> I'm shooting around a stack of books, trying to avoid the corner of the TV, shooting at an angle and trying to get into that, you know, trash can. They're going to think our room is really oddly, didn't, like, <laughs> Decorated just from this description. But if, eh. it, it's sort of shooting over the corner of his desk, basically, and the trash can's sort of on the wall. Yeah, and there's a stack of books next to the corner, so it's like I'm trying to deal with that too. So it's bas basically it's not as cl it's not a very clear shot, um, and sometimes I make it, sometimes I don't. So meh. Back to complaining about Red's life once again. <laughs> yes. What? <laughs> okay. We are too ADD to have a proper discussion on this, <laughs> but. Anyway, oh. the, having this logical argument. So you admit that I am correct about this since I have the... I can cite the source. I can pull up the website right here. And they're like, okay, yeah, I'll, we'll admit that. And you also admit that I'm right about uh, what temperature paper catches fire on. And they're like, yeah. So you have admitted that I am correct about the fact that my lampshade is not a fire hazard. And they sort of pause and go, yes. And I'm like, ah, oh, this is... Uh, or, is that Aristotle or Socrates? And then I think it's the Socratic method that I'm thinking of. I'm like, yes, the Socratic method wins again. And they go, but you still can't have it. Why? Because it breaks the rules. But the rules are there with the intention of it not being a fire hazard. You've just established that it's not a fire hazard. You are, you are certifiably insane. Yeah. And then, my, and this is my internal monologue. My external monologue is just sort of a sca scathing glare. And they're like, okay. And I just sort of look at them blankly. And they say, is that okay? I'm like, I don't see how it matters what I say, since you've just acknowledged that I am correct and still refuse to cede the argument. And that is my story. Oh, but the epilogue of this story, 
I still left the lampshade on. I just took it off before room inspections. <laughs> <laughs> that was another... Because there's only like a month left of the semester, and it is not worth fighting them four times over it when I can did just they... sort of sneak around. Did they make... Uh, did they... Uh, after the uh, whole manager thing, did they make you... Did they still make you take the uh, thing off the wall? The, no. The whiteboard? No, they stopped. No, the, they stopped the, the whiteboard could say the lampshade had to come down now. <laughs> and let's establish that both of these things were there for that semester and most of the previous semester. Yeah, so, anyway. Uh, so, yes. Needless to say, you know, engineer... Res life should not be... In, uh, business degree should not be put in charge of engineering degrees. hey <laughs> Yes, that's funny. That was a this that was a discussion topic we were having earlier. I forget why. Why did that get brought up? Um, I think we we're just talking about the power usage. Oh yeah, we were just talking about how um, and it, the illegal microwave. Oh yeah. So apparently we have we have a you know one point three kilowatt microwave, which is a little it, stronger is, than standard, but you know. Yeah, it's really. I mean, for that size microwave, it's you know, it's a little on, it's a little on the high side, but that's not a bad it's thing. It's still something that you'd have in your kitchen at home. Yeah, the the thing that you have in your kitchen is, at home is probably, probably actually high. It's actually no. Yeah. If you have, I think a, the home ones or the one at my house is one point two. Well, some uh, the microwaves that you like ceiling the the, the microwave, 7-Eleven microwaves that are like a two nine or whatever. <laughs> no, I was gonna say but, I want one of those for my house. Put some water in for 30 seconds boiling <laughs> no i was gonna say um but the ones that you like you know hang above your uh above your uh above your, your oven range. or your stove is usually a little bit bigger and it usually has a higher wattage associated with it but um besides the point but anyway so yes our microwave that we have here is like 1.2 1.3 kilowatts i think and you know apparently the widener maximum is 0.9 kilowatts and as far as I know, as far as I know, that is done, you know, solely for, you know, power efficiency, I guess. I think that's the, I think that's the number that they're focusing on. They think apparently that the, you know, the lower wattage microwave is going to use less energy. I um, assume they just wanted the lower wattage microwave because the smaller the current draw, the less likely it is that some of the wiring catches on fire. <laughs> No, it's, I mean, it's not going to either it's way. It's not but going to either way, but... It's anyways. a CYA thing, in my opinion. But, because I remember when I read it, they were concerned about, like, the... They were concerned about the Energy Star rating and stuff on the appliances uh, and whatnot. Yeah, so I read their policy. So I would, <laughs> I would imagine that, you know, when they say 0.9 kilowatts, they're actually, you know, focusing more on the, like, you know, power usage than anything else. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong... You're wrong. You know, if, uh, oh, you meant about this. <laughs> no. <laughs> so Couldn't pass up the opportunity, sorry. Uh, um, so apparently, uh, so correct me if I'm wrong, but um, if I want to boil a cup of water, I'm going to have to put in, you know, so many joules of energy, regardless. You know, the, yes. the, the amount of energy that has to go into the water to make it boil is going to be the same, regardless of whether or not that I have a 0.9 kilowatt microwave or a 1.3 kilowatt microwave. Yeah, that's some law of physics. The Pick a number. <laughs> the, only, the only difference is the speed at which I heat up that water. Correct. The 1.3 kilowatt pumps more energy into the water in a shorter amount of time. So the one because point, a joule is some amount of energy okay. per second. You you could you could do the sort conver, of, you could yeah. do the conversion if you really want to. I'm not going to bother with that right now. Like Newton meters per second squared is. But so, yeah. but the the exact conversion. <laughs> then isn't physics really happens. But the exact conversion isn't really necessary to be done to you know get the point that I'm trying to make. So if you have a 1.3 kilowatt microwave, you know you're going to have a higher current draw. For a shorter amount of time, so you use some total amount of energy in kilowatt hours. Now, you could also use a smaller microwave at 0.9 kilowatts, smaller current, but you have to use it for a longer amount of time to heat your water. Yes. So, really, it's going to use the same amount of energy in yeah. kilowatt hours either way. To so, break even. You know, one you you know use you know more you know quicker. The other one you use less longer. So. It's going to use the same amount of energy regardless. It's just, you know, how quickly do you want it to boil? You have to travel 80 miles. You can either move it 80 miles an hour for one hour, or you can move it 40 miles an hour for two hours. Exactly. Wow, that was so much. You said that so much. It's a blur. Oh, like 
One of my minor catchphrases is, can you explain it, or can you oversimplify it using an analogy? Like putting too much air in a balloon. Yes. <laughs> Have you so, seen that episode? But yes, so there is your there is your car analogy, and that works very well, actually, for this example. Yes. Um, so, yeah. I think we've filled up our intro topic pretty well, since I was only supposed to go for 10 minutes, and yeah. we're now at the 20-minute mark. So the, so the summary of this 20-minute conversation... Rest life is idiots. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Although the is people this, who work there are really like, quite nice. The, they are quite just, nice people. It's just, you know, don't, logic you, you, did should, not, you shouldn't be putting business majors in charge logic of was not a re- <laughs> Logic was not a required class for business majors. Uh, okay. Nerd okay. joke of the week. Yes. Uh, this is vaguely, well, it's holiday related, so looking backwards. Why do mathematicians have a problem confusing Halloween with Christmas? I don't know. Because Oct 31 is Deck 25. <laughs> An explanation. Oct is short for October, so October 31st, but it's also short for Octal, which is base 8. We use a base 10 counting system. Base 8, you get up to 8, and then you go around the horn again, basically. And Deck 25 is decimal 25. So 31 in Octal is 3 eighths and a 1, which is 25. And 25 in decimal is two tens and a five, which is also 25. For those of you who do understand base systems, I'm sorry to have just wasted a minute of your time. <laughs> Foreign phrase of for, the week. For those of you who don't understand it, Wikipedia. <laughs> Actually, um, I think it's... Uh, who's the... Um, There's probably a very no, nice who's the math video. tutorial guy. It's not Khan Academy. It's um, J... something? I don't know. But Patrick I, JMT. But I was going to say... Patrick JMT has a good video on base systems. But yeah, I was going to say, if you don't like uh, reading, you could do a video on it, because you, YouTube's probably got... Microwave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube, pro- YouTube has very good tutorial videos for just about anything nowadays. Between Khan Academy and some of these independent people, you're bound to find a good video on whatever it is you want to learn about. Really? Who needs college? <laughs> I mean, honestly, the number of math courses I've passed because of YouTube is a staggeringly high number. Uh, yes, foreign phrase of the week, though. Because there's something about... <laughs> When you when you have like the ability to pause and rewind the professor, well, yeah, that. But I was also going to say, you know, you have having a you know a math professor who spent you know eight years of college and has a doctorate degree in mathematics trying to teach math to an engineer is never it never seems to work because the mathematician is always going to be like more concerned about the theoretical stuff and the engineer comes out you know. No, Lisko's pretty good. Not very. Eh, he's okay. Pappas, Pappas was. Oh God, no. <laughs> um, Pappas could teach, but he couldn't give tests, and uh, Nevlin could give tests, but he couldn't teach. Yeah, so I mean, if you take him in the right order, that could be beneficial. But yeah, <laughs> I had a. Um, I actually went uh, because I needed to have a math class. So th- this is like I I was taking a cl- some engineering course in the fall and it's the summer and I needed a math course to satisfy the prerequisites so I took a course over at a uh, community college DCCC cough cough um DC cube the cube Delaware County Community College cough cough the, um the fighting cubes that apparently <laughs> that apparently 90% of you know Widener students go, go to, to for mathematics math. yes um <laughs> um but if you're a math major, don't come to Widener. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, crap, where was I going? Oh yeah, uh, DC Cube. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So there, I had my math professor was actually a you know an engineer. She was a practicing engineer doing you know you know research for you know Ford Motor Company and like you know engine efficiency and other things like that. And an engineer so, who works on engines. How rare. <laughs> Ha 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 ha. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, she was a, you know, she was an engineer and she used math because for problem solving in like a real world context. And so she taught, so she taught her multivariable calculus course, which in some colleges is considered calculus three. Um, she taught that in a, you know, kind of a down to earth in way with a focus on like application. And it's amazing, an engineer teaching another engineer math. It was like, oh my god, this makes so much more sense. This is so much more clear. I can use this. I understand conic sections for the first time in my life. So, yes. So it's amazing the difference that a professor can make when trying to teach a subject. 
I mean, uh, the subject goes a certain ways, and so does the student. But it's really the method of communication. Oh, yes. It really is the method of communication. And unfortunately, teachers don't tend to change their method of communication based on their audience very often. There's a good chance that this is incorrect, but I have heard that in Germany, if you want to teach at what is equivalently the high school level or above, you need to have, like, a sort of... Again, I don't know what their degree equivalents are, but I think it's a master's in education and whatever you're teaching as well. Oh, okay. Being a teacher in Germany is like being a bard in first edition Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Zing couldn't have made that any nerdier if I tried. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, that, that's my like five second rant. Not again, now, disclaimer. Um, that doesn't mean that all teachers are bad or that some teachers aren't like very good at communicating their ideas based on their audience. It just seems that a majority of teachers have a tendency to... I mean, you know, even the teachers good. that are bad for us are good for math majors, presumably. Presumably, yes. Because it's a wine pairing. <laughs> but, but this is the problem at Weiner University. You know, ninety percent of the class is, and the ninety percent of the class that's taking multivariable calculus is engineers. The other ten percent is nursing, nursing, <laughs> or you actually, know, I don't think nursing has to take multi. I don't think so, but it'd be other, really weird if they did. The other ten, the other ten percent is a mixture of like everyone else, including like math majors, which is in my class of like thirty people was only like a couple students. Yeah. I, I say nursing because Widener's two biggest programs are nursing and engineering. Yes. Or at least here on main campus that is. Yes. I mean we have a whole separate law school in what is that, Delaware? Delaware. Or is that the Harrisburg one? No, Delaware is the law campus. Yeah, okay. Um so yeah. Um and it's a ninety ten ratio. You got ninety percent male engineers and ninety percent female nurses. <laughs> I yeah. think you can figure out the tens. <laughs> Uh, so anyways, that's enough for that topic. Moving on, what's next on your list? Uh, foreign phrase of the week. Uh, <clears throat> oh, I need more phlegm for this. Foreign phrase of the week is mm. If you think you know what that means, please leave it in the comments below. I apologize for my poor dialect. Uh, last time, last episode's <laughs> uh, foreign try, phrase trying, of the week. You were trying so hard with that act. You were, you were, uh, I'm not, no, I'm just go. Well, I'm not going to comment. Af after we finish this, I'll tell you why I had to do the voice so poorly. Um, uh, it was Hungarian and it was, my hovercraft is full of eels. That is a, <laughs> it's kind of an obscure Monty Python reference. From a, <laughs> okay, let's just go into that, shall we? <laughs> it might as well. There's one sketch where a guy's printing, um, translation books, Hungarian to English for tourists, but like. Uh, I'd like to purchase some cigarettes or a pack of matches is my hovercraft is full of eels. Like, that's what it... Yeah. <laughs> so you get the uh, Hungarian tourist who comes into the smoke shop and he's like, my hovercraft is full of eels. I'm sorry, sir. My hovercraft is full of eels. Come again? And he starts doing like the um, the gesture for matches and he's like, oh, oh, you mean matches, matches, yes. <laughs> and then it cuts to like the trial of the guy who's printing. Just look up on uh, YouTube, my hovercraft is full of eels. You'll, you'll find it. Or a Hungarian phrase book. Right. Speaking of books, that brings us to our first actual topic, half an hour in. Audiobooks. And more importantly, a question that was sort of nagging me over the break. Is, with the subject of reading, is it more important to consume the message of the book or to read? Because, like, there are a lot of books I want to read, but I'm a very slow reader and I just usually don't have the time. But if I... I can put an audiobook on in the background and multitask. So, is it more important? Am I missing anything by not reading other than, you know, the practice of reading? Or is reading the important part to get the practice? Um, my, my opinion on audiobooks is it's, um, it comes down to the environment and the reason you're reading the book. If you're reading, if you're reading the book for pleasure, you're reading, you know, more for the fact that you want to consume the message of the book and the story that the book entails. So, you know, whether or not you read the book or whether or not you hear the book, you're going to, you know, in theory at least, you know, achieve the same kind of, uh, you know, mental picture. Now, you could say... On that note, do you think now, there's a John Hurt reads Lord of the Rings out there? 
I don't know. There should be. <laughs> yeah. I'm still working um, on that book after like a year, but I've taken breaks in between before you think I'm an ultra slow reader. <laughs> I'm trying Getting to, back to your point about yeah, because I'm trying to hold on to this like train of, I'm trying to hold on to this train of thought in my head. So sorry, um, I put a stack of pennies on your track, <laughs> yeah. and the pennies just got flattened. Well, um, yeah, <laughs> um, point press. But yeah, so you could argue that um, so now there is the issue of you know whether or not the um, now there is the you know. Uh, what is it, idea or thought about, you know, uh, how much the medium changes the perception of the story or, like, the visual image that your mind paints of the scene. Mm -hmm. So if you're reading it, now you could say that, um, you know, when you read something, you know, and there's no external influence, you're just reading it, like, uh, particularly with dialogue. I don't think the, I don't think your mental image of, like, scenery or, like, a physical object that's being described is really going to change. That I don't think that mental image that you develop of that object is not going to change whether or not you read about it or you hear about it, if it's word for word. Mm -hmm. But something like dialogue, I think that, like dialogue and emphasis and things like that, could change if, like, the reader isn't, like... Because when it's you read something... It's also easier to miss humor, like the little subtle jokes in there, like... Yeah. It's a bit in uh, Lord of the Rings book and the movie actually have a similar thing where uh, Pippin says, you're going to need people of intelligence for this mission. And I think it's Mary in the movie and Gandalf, or Mary in the book and Gandalf in the movie says, well, that rules you out, Peregrine Took. And in the book, if you're not reading too closely, you can actually kind of miss that, because it's yeah. rather subtly slipped in there amongst all the other dialogue at the Council of Elrond. But in the movie, you get mm -hmm. um, uh, Ian McKellen very point... Or, no, that's... Mary? Yeah, you get there. Saying that, and it's hard to miss. But yeah, so I mean, the the point being, things like dialogue are gonna be very susceptible that, to that. So, like something that you read, you might perceive as being said in like one manner, but the uh, like the person reading the book in the audio form might like put a different emphasis on it, or we might not think it's quite as like flamboyant or like, italics. Make, things like italics that. make everything better. Yeah. So also, there's a great need for a sarcasm font. So John said think, sarcastically. So, if you're so if you're looking to simply read for pleasure and just to consume the story, um, audiobooks are not a problem. And the amount of the audiobooks and versus regular reading is not going to change, you know, the story too much for you. And it's going to be relatively close to the same thing. Now, uh, on unless you're reading to stave off Alzheimer's, it's yeah, probably good with an audio. The real issue you're going to run into is if you say, I read five books a year, people go, well, good on you. You say, I listen to five books a year, everyone goes, hmm, that's interesting. Except for the uh, the book nuts who go, you're listening to audiobooks. In which case, you are perfectly entitled to hit them with the heaviest object you can find. It'll be a book, trust me, they're carrying one. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, and so that, and that leads into the second half of my analysis of this topic. Um, <laughs> and that's... Analyze the question. Because... I said, for my first half, I said I was reading for pleasure. Now, let's say you're reading um, for something like... Uh, school. It, yeah, school, like in an English class, for example. Um, now, this, again, now this, again, changes between, like, lower-level grades, like, you know, like middle school and maybe, like, a little bit of, like, early high school. Um, oh, I was thinking fifth grade now. <laughs> but, I don't know. Um... Uh, yeah, when I mean, you're learning to read is yeah probably elementary school. probably like fifth grade down. I mean elementary school. Middle school you're basically just picking up vocabulary here and there. Yeah, um, exactly. So I think um, college you're reading more for like like message very and message and very like and to feel very depressed because they never have a good book selection. Yeah, and so like <laughs> you're reading for like very deep level stuff and like high level analysis. Um, so, anyways. Um, you know, audiobooks, when, you know, done in conjunction to, like, physically holding the book and following along with your eyes, you know, that can be very helpful because, you know, you're utilizing two senses to consume something versus just one, sight versus sight and sound. So there's, Wait, like... what? What's sight and sound? Is that the audiobook? Uh, you know, 
Are you reading along with the audiobook? Yeah, that's what I said. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, I must have missed that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like, it's yeah. one sense for the other in most yeah. cases. Sorry, if, if, you, <laughs> if you missed that, I probably didn't make that very clear for the listeners either. But yeah, so if you're doing something like in school, if you're following along with in the audiobook with like a physical copy of the book in front of you that you're following along with your eyes, you know, there's like, there's various, you know, research and arguments that um, you're going to consume that information much better and you're yeah. going to retain what it a lot like more. What is it, like 10% of what you hear, 20% of what you read, 90% of what you teach? <laughs> so, yeah. I so just anyways, know the teaching's 90%. So, yeah. Um, Where these numbers come from, no one has any idea besides maybe some internet site that was made up on the spot by a marketing exec. And so on the second, and on the second point of... Um, on the second point of, you know, the academic side of it, um, if you're going to, uh, you know, the, when you read, when you, when you read more, you get quicker at reading, typically. Yes. You know, you know, a majority of people tend to get faster as you, like, read more and more, just because, you know, you, I don't know why, I don't know the psychological or like the physiological reasons behind why it is, but people tend to read faster as they practice more. Because you get better at reading. Same yeah. reason that you can type faster. Exactly. So, um, you know, there's a couple different. So basically, you know, some people might have you, you know, you know, some people might argue that you know it's important to like learn to read a little bit faster when you're trying to consume larger quantities of information without losing that, you know, information. So, ba so bottom line on the academic side, you know, on the academic side, the book is really like indispensable, I guess, and the audio book can be a very good supplement to the physical book. When you're doing it for pleasure, it's like, you know, a flip-flop. I mean, it doesn't really matter either way, I don't think. Uh, it depends on how much, you know, it depends on how true to the book you want to stay in that case. And the difference between the two is not going to be that big. So, anyways, that's my long well, spiel on that. If you're reading for the sake of... I think what it comes down to is, if you're reading for the sake of reading, then obviously you should be reading. But, personally, I like to read because there's a good story in there somewhere. Yeah, and I think that's why a majority of people read for, you know... Pleasure. And there's still something to be said for reading over audiobooks for that, just because you absorb more of it when you read, because you're an active participant as opposed to passive. Yes. Mm hmm Exactly. And that there was one other thing I wanted to mention. Oh yes. There is another this is much less meaningful, but with audiobooks with dialogue. That I have yet to find a good uh audiobook with a male narrator who can do female voices. <laughs> In freshman year high school we were reading the Odyssey and the Sometimes we'd uh, just do like a read-along day where we put on a uh, the audiobook of it, and a person doing a sort of middle-of-the-road Patrick Stewart impression would read the Odyssey. To be honest, and it was very—it's very nice to hear Patrick Stewart or an impressionist of Patrick Stewart reading the Odyssey. But on the other hand, when he starts doing uh, what's Odysseus's wife's name? It's not. Uh, Penelope. Yeah, when he's there. Yeah, when he's doing the voice of Penelope or Circe, or if Calypso has any lines, hers, it is bloody hysterical because he has this deep sort of projecting Shakespearean voice, and then he goes into something like this, and it it sounds like when the uh, Monty Python do old women, <laughs> it's that sort of thing, <laughs> uh. and like any serious tone you might have is totally lost. <laughs> Or when he's doing the voice of a young boy, that's also good. Because his voice gets a little higher, but it doesn't try to change gender, so it's just like, um, you got a spit bubble caught in your throat there, chief? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> that's audiobooks. Find someone, find a voice actor, that's what you gotta do. Like, um, ah, there's one person that comes to mind that I cannot remember their actual name. Uh, what, what's, what book or movie or thing were they doing? Uh, no, it's just, uh, I believe it's a male actor who can do sort of female voices-ish. Oh, are you talking about the, are you talking about the singer? What? Uh, you're... What singer? Well, uh, there was a, uh, if you, 
if you go if you go to YouTube and you search for uh, one man Disney, one man Disney uh, oh. story or yeah. one man Disney movie. Yeah, no, it's, it's like a voice actor like uh, Jim Cummings or Maurice LaMarche, one of the big okay. name voice actors who just happens to be able to do sort of female voices. Okay, yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, they're not perfectly convincing, but you can at least they're they're close. They're, they're passable they're... if you see an animated female talking along with it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe someone like that. You know, professional voice actors rather than professional narrators. Uh, I'm going to kill this topic before it curls up and dies on its own. <laughs> okay. Let, let's do the news, shall we? Let's. In the world of sports, Trigger has beaten Bulls... What are you doing? Keep, keep going. I was going to pull up IFLS for you. Okay, I'm just going to multitask I, that. It's I, thought, <laughs> I, thought you were, I thought you were going to like do that, and then I could pick it up for you while you are reading that, so you could glance right into IFLS. We're pretty good at managing tabs, even with the auto-hide feature. Anyway, Trigger has beaten Bullseye in the horse races, but be sure to keep your eye out for Bullseye brand contact adhesive at your local supply store. Yes, that, uh, that was a horrible joke, and I'm a horrible person. So, weather. Tomorrow's forecast is Tuesday. In time for this week in science. Since I can't find this week in science on IFLS's Facebook page, we're going to read the top stories on their site, iflscience.com. Top story, plants and animals. Geese fly over Himalayas using roller coaster strategy. I'm so going to read that article when we are done uh, recording because I have no idea what chuffing bugger is going on with that. You want to read this one? Plants and animals. See-through shrimp-like creature has a dozen retinas in each eye. That's actually quite interesting. I think we, can we modify that for a camera design? And there's the engineer right there. <laughs> actually, I think there are there are some camera designs that use essentially multiple image sensors, but those are usually very specialized configurations. Well, for this it. is a specialized shrimp-like creature. <laughs> yeah, and I imagine it's uh, I imagine it's uh, something that lives in like you know a deep part of the ocean where there's lo little light. I'm guessing that's also a centimeter marker. I think it might be. But yeah, so it's... Wait, yeah. arrow indicates photosensory... Ah, scale bar 2 millimeters. Not even close. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking at an image of Much the shrimp and it's... Tiny thing. Yeah. The image is deceiving. Oh, that's its head. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, In the world of space. So you want to do the voice of... Space. What's the How hair? is that? Good, good enough. Good enough. That was, Passable. It was probably horrible. That's not Watson, is it? No, it's Weebly. No, it's it's the Space Corps. What's the? Anyway, it, Portal it's Two the, references. It's kind of the this the idiotic kind of slightly schizophrenic core, <laughs> and he's just referred to as the Space Corps because all he's really known for is saying space. I can't do it that time. Space. Anyway, <laughs> a nearby st before we. Totally alien. <laughs> well, we, we, and uh, we should also specify Apologies. that is, we should also <laughs> specify here that when we're reading this, it's actually spelled S P A A A A A A A C E because, because I have the X K C D substitution extension for Google Chrome. Yeah, so it also corrects senators to elf lords among <laughs> other things. Elections are pie eating contests. <laughs> Force is horse. So Star Wars Seven: The Horse Awakens. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do need to try and see if I... Now, he's a Google Chrome user. I'm a Firefox user. I use so. Firefox when Google Chrome isn't working because I'm not going back to IE now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so yeah, but anyways. I don't know. I just... I like the fact that... Uh, I like the fact that Firefox has the ability to sync my... Um, has the ability to sync my tabs and favorites and other, like, history type of information between my devices. So, like, I have Firefox on my Google desktop. Google Chrome does that. It can? Yeah, my, when I, I try to do a Google search on my phone, it'll bring up previous searches that I did from my computer. Oh, nice. Well, yeah, I mean, well, I have a... Um, Which yeah. is also somewhat startling, because it's, um, it's an Android phone, so there are people that I met freshman year that I was uh, trying to establish sort of contacts for people I can call for various classes, and I entered them into my phone, and then I go onto Google Chrome at the, like, two months later, and it's like, hey, do you know this person? It's like... Uh, no, I haven't really talked to them. How did you get, how do you know who I know? Oh, yeah. 
So, but yeah, so that that's one of the, that's one of the nice reasons why I like Firefox, and I know Google probably has something similar for Android phones. But yeah, I have that on my desktop, laptop, and tablet, and they all sync together, which is nice. So, um, but we we could probably do a whole other discussion on like what browser we use and why. Oh, that's so, easily an intro topic, if not a full topic. Yeah. So who knows? We might we we'll might see. we'll we might come back to that topic in a future episode. Next week in the universe. Uh, meanwhile, in space, a nearby, nearby, near, <laughs> you read that one. <laughs> nearby, a nearby star has three planets slightly larger than Earth, with one in the habitable zone. I believe it's called the Goldilocks region. Scientists. <laughs> yes. Why more sharks don't invade freshwater lakes and rivers? NASA and NOAA agree. Twenty fourteen was the hottest year on record. Older posts. <laughs> are these? Just, are we going to read them? Are these? Just, <laughs> I was just reading the next thing that came up in the little. Are the? Are, were those just today's posts? Uh, I think those were the top ones for. I don't know what if they use like a Reddit system or just a most a Reddit system being a um the, the weighted top, top thing. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. That would be interesting to know how they set that up. Um, environment solving the puzzle of sea level rise by reexamining the past. Look at that, someone actually learning from history. Well, you know what they say, if you don't study history, you're doomed to repeat it. If you do, you're doomed to teach it. <laughs> yeah. Um, to people who wind up, you know... To <laughs> people who ignore it. you anyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you end up teaching it to business majors. <laughs> so, environment. Fossilized plants describe evolution of uh, prehistoric ecosystems. That's actually kind of interesting. Yeah. And for whatever reason, I, my mind instantly jumps to Jurassic Park on that one with the paleobotany. I think it always. It, I always it thought always, paleobotany was kind of cool. There are there are pretty much there are a lot of things where uh, that's an interesting picture. There are a lot of things for me <laughs> that um, uh, just trigger a reference to Jurassic Park in my head. But plants and animals. Another good news why it's good to be a human. The coin spiders chop off their own genitals after sex. I'm going I to see... guess I know why. Okay, what's your guess as to why? Because I can't see any, like, so good purpose that could possibly serve. With bees, I want to say honeybees, when the proto-queen is ready to fly off and start her own colony, she starts emitting pheromones, and then sort of a cloud of male bees follows her trying to mate. And whichever one does get it in, um, presumably impregnates her, but then to ensure that uh, his bee sperm, I guess, is the only... Uh, viable one for the ins insemination of future colonies. Uh, they sort of break off and leave it behind so that way it clogs her up. Hmm. Insect sex is surprisingly kinky. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> okay, so... Here, anyways. have a souvenir. Man, can't you just leave me a t-shirt like humans? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, can't I just leave you with a t-shirt like humans? I can't, I'm kind of attached to this, literally. <laughs> oh. How, uh... Speaking of sperm. Speaking of sperm. <laughs> in chemistry, salmon... Salmon. Salmon sperm could help us recycle rare earth elements. I'm really totally into that article. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I am actually kind of curious about that. How exactly do those two things relate? Um, do I really want to know? I think that's the more important question. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm interested, but not in the clickbait way. More in the, mm, am I going to feel dirty after this way? <laughs> Ooh, now, this is another interesting one. Long lost Beagle probe finally found on Mars. So, did we actually lose, did we lose a probe on Mars? I feel like that's one of the things you'd want to keep track of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm actually kind of, I'm kind of curious now. And that does not look like an actual picture. That looks yeah, like. Yeah, that's a CG. That's totally a CG thing. What, you thought Curiosity took a picture? It's like, found one! <laughs> uh, now, when they use a picture, when they say long lost probe is finally found on Ma Mars. I, my first thought is that, you know, one of the other rovers actually stumbled across it, and I would have expected them, because they have all those cameras and they're constantly sending back images, that they just show us I screenshot suspect we just of that. found it with a telescope or something. Oh, yeah. But anyways, um, yeah, whatever. Okay. Anyways. We're not reading on. page three of the posts. <laughs> Although these are all actually quite interesting, and we can probably keep going on for a long time with this. That's kind of a really lame topic, though. We're going to read headlines and then <laughs> speculate on the articles. Yes. <laughs> it's like the Mystery Science Theater approach that, to news journalism. 
And then, so, and then someone actually, then one of the actual listeners reads it and posts back, yeah, you guys were completely off with that, like, complete 180. <laughs> if you want to do so, go ahead. <laughs> yes. Please do. We, we insist. We're actually kind of curious to hear your comments on that. We're curious to hear any comments. Moving on to our, um... You had to make that sound so sad. <laughs> well, no, like... <laughs> Shit. <laughs> you know his shoe fell off. This is the internet. This is this is a react or reactive. This is a um this is sort of a direct reply medium. That's one of the things I like about it. So basically We've got ten minutes left. Let's so try to know, run through a topic, shall we? Well, Alright, so just to paint another picture for them. You know how so my mind works by like references to movies. So, like, you know, whenever something happens, I can, like, immediately pull up, like, some kind of, like, movie clip in my head or a quote from a movie for whatever. Um, and so, when I lost my shoe there, I thought of Home Alone and the... <laughs> I haven't seen Home Alone. I've seen Home Alone 2. What? That is a sin. Hey, I, I've only seen the last 15 minutes of Terminator 2 and nothing else. <laughs> well, anyways, so... Um, as... Oh, wait, this is coming from the guy who's never seen RoboCop. <laughs> Shut up. Or any of the other movies I tell you to watch. Uh, I've been getting Monty through... Monty Python I've... and the Holy Grail. I've been getting through them. <laughs> yes, you have been working on them. I've been working on them. <laughs> so, um, but yes. Yeah, so That's another topic, as the show exchanges. As a majority of the listeners will probably know when I say yes. the <laughs> Home most Alone people... scene. <laughs> yeah, most people have seen Home Alone. Um, yeah, he sticks his shoe in the doggy door to try and tr- check for anyone and he gets his shoe caught on the doggy door and the shoe, like, falls off on the inside and you just see the hand reach... And you just hear him say, shit, and the hand reaches in and grabs the shoe. <laughs> um, so that ba- that basically is exactly what happened with my slipper and the side of the chair here. You know, I brought my leg up. Yeah. You know, slipper gets caught on the edge of the chair, falls off, shit. <laughs> this must make for really interesting listening. Just, <laughs> oh, Eric <laughs> describes his slipper falling off for five minutes. <laughs> I I thought I thought about that in hindsight. <laughs> well, well, the listeners have a very very detailed mental image of what exactly happened. <laughs> so, I imagine someone's listening to this. Get the text from a friend. Hey, you wanna hang out? Or you wanna hang? Yeah. You wanna hang out? What are you doing? Listening to a guy on YouTube describe his shoe fall off. <laughs> you wanna hang out? Yes. <laughs> I don't care what you're doing. Uh, okay. Um, anyways. Yes. Something um, I we're going to definitely go over the time on, so my apologies when this stretches out to 80 minutes. Studio Ghibli! And Hayao Miyazaki. Oh, we were actually going to go... Well, you know what? We're actually getting long enough in the podcast where we could actually save that as a... Topic. Topic. Right, topic so. But, you know, no, let's, let's do we it tonight do... because it's fresh in our minds. It, Is it? It's, I mean, it's fresh. We just watched them like last night and like the night before. So it's... we've been watching um, a Miyazaki movie for the past three days, and we were going to watch um, Nausicaa tonight. So yeah, we be, we've been having a Studio Ghibli marathon essentially this weekend. I guarantee you, I could talk on this for like fifteen minutes. Now. Oh, I'm sure. I, I, I want to save this for like when we don't have material. Yeah, we probably and should. we don't wa- we don't have enough movies that we've seen in common to actually pass up an opportunity to. <laughs> So I just realized that like five minutes of this podcast is us teasing like potential ideas for future podcasts. Yeah, I'm gonna go through and re-listen to this one probably and write down some notes. <laughs> yeah. Wait, you haven't been writing these down? No. All right. I'm stealing your piece of paper and I'm taking my pen, which is right here. His good Uniball down. pen. This is official. Although yes. he is writing it on the back of a used script, so it's not too official. Blank piece of paper. That's not a blank piece of paper. That's my physics homework. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm writing on the back of that one. <laughs> okay. I will. I will stick with the blank script. Please don't write on it in pen. So, <laughs> so future future topics. Um, Studio Ghibli browser choices and Studio. How do you pronounce spell that? Ghibli. Uh, G H I B L I. I wasn't even close in that spelling. <laughs> <laughs> write it phonetically. You'll know what you mean. All right, I'm pretty sure <laughs> that's we the know engineering that approach to spelling. Yes. Oh, in dynamics, the other day we were going around. It's like everyone in the class is an engineer, or just about everyone in the class is the engineer. So the teacher is sort of a getting to know you thing. Uh, one of the questions we had to answer was, "Why did you go into engineering?" And I said, "I went into engineering because I'm good at math, but bad at spelling." No one laughed because no one actually pays attention during those things. But <laughs> if yeah. they had been, they would have been in stitches. 
<laughs> yes. It's like the mug that says, I'm an engineer, misspelled, crossed out. I'm an engineer, misspelled a different way, crossed out. I'm an engine, crossed out. I'm good at math. Yeah. <laughs> I math good. Yeah. You see, I'm not even that great. The thing is... I we mean, have calculators for that. I, this is the thing. I'm not terribly good at math. I'm okay at math. Don't get me wrong. I can, I'm okay with math. Um, but I'm not great at math, nor am I, like, overly great with spelling. I'm okay in both regards. So the only thing I really have going for me and why I chose engineering is I'm very good at problem solving and, like, critical thinking. Puzzling, thing that, puzzling things together. That's what engineering is, because... I can, I can say, hey, this thermodynamics, like, concept, you know, paired with, like, Ohm's law paired with this would combine very nicely to form this. Yeah. So it's I, that's my specialty and why I chose engineering. My specialty is I'm good at math and I'm a fan of KISS, as in keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. Because, uh, I don't know if I've said this before, but I heard somewhere that uh, writing is like engin By the way, I write as a hobby. Writing is like engineering. You're not done when there's no more to add. You're done when there's no more to take out. <laughs> you know what I just thought about when you mentioned writing? Another. Again, videos in my head. Um, I'll get the pen. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> uh, this was a reference for the readers. Uh, oh, you movies, should, not You not should... Um, there... There, there, I can't remember what the YouTube channel name is because it's some very kind of odd YouTube channel name. Um, but there's this nice YouTube series that's very good and it's called like Welcome To. And they do different videos like Welcome To YouTube and Welcome To Facebook. And they also did one that was Welcome To, uh, Welcome To, I think it was Wattpad. Um, which is, you know, as far as I know, I've never been to it, but as far as I know, it's like a, you know, place where writers can post, like, you know, their own writings and fan stories and whatnot. Um, yeah. Ha ha. Slow computer. Um, I'm running 20 million tabs. Yes. He, he maxes out the amount of RAM he has in his computer because he runs so many freaking tabs at once. Yeah. Um, the channel's called Jello Apocalypse. Yes, Jello Apocalypse. So, yeah. Because that makes sense. But, yes, on the topic of writing, <laughs> so, you should That sounds like that a out. Tumblr name. Yeah, it does. Um, and they do have that. Welcome to Tumblr. But anyway, so yeah. you guys should check out um, the channel. They're like five-minute videos, and they're I pretty funny. I've, I know I've told you this, but I haven't told the internet this yet. I believe it's an Oscar Wilde quote. Uh, be sure to keep an open mind, just not so open your brain falls out. Tumblr is people who kept a mind so open their brain fell out, given how... What are you doing? I'm reading through your recommendations. No. Um... <laughs> Tumblr, the world's most easily offended website. Not that there isn't good stuff on it, but dear God, is there? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. You know, it's kind of funny. You can, like, really kind of tell a lot about a person and their interests based on their YouTube recommendations. I have a lot of stuff from Scalagrim. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> this is, I've been watching a lot of that recently. It's funny. Google could probably paint a very accurate picture of all of us based on, like, the combined, like, a mass knowledge it has accumulated. About Google already did. Happened. We just have to thank them for not being evil. Yes. Thank oh you. God. Thank Term you, evil. We're being hunted down by Google's <laughs> Terminators <laughs> and self-driving cars. I just said, I meant to say thank you, Google, but I said thank you, evil. <laughs> right. Evil, a growth industry. <laughs> Read order the stick for that joke. Oh, they. But yes, thank you, Google, for I didn't know you were Jewish. Motto. Oy vey is Hebrew. Or Yiddish. Yiddish, yes. Yiddish, which is like half Hebrew, half English. <laughs> uh, you don't and have, a, and a, don't and a have sprinkle to... of gibberish on top, just because we don't know quite where all of it comes from. You don't have to be Jewish to be able to say oy vey. Yeah, ones. Do you have? <laughs> do you have to be like? Do you have to be Mexican to say hola? And Come that... on. Fuck <laughs> off. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh, anyways, um, hey, 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 and you know, and you know what, but, um, but, no, I, and you know what else, bug off, um, bug off just made me think of the, the phrase bug out from, like, the old military term, like, bugging out, have you ever heard of that term? Bugging out, like, the computer's bugging out again? No, like, <laughs> No, like, the 1960s military term where it, it was meant for, like, mash units and, like, you know, you know, mobile, mobile Army Surgical Hospital, you know, the term bug out would be like, you know, you have, like, 
in incoming raid or other reason why you need to like get out of that area really quickly. Okay. So the term you know bug out was used where it's just like you pack throw it in the bag out. and run. Yeah, you throw everything in the bag. It goes on the truck and you like bug out. So, um, but yeah, that that phrase you know bug off made me think of the phrase bug out, which made me think of the show Mash. Mash. <laughs> yes, which again I recommended. I recommend to people. So wait, you've seen a show I've seen? This is the first. I know, right? Have you even finished Firefly? Yes, I have. Okay, good. Um, I can't think of any Firefly references now. <laughs> the problem is that these would keep coming up, and I'd ask him if he'd seen the episode yet, and he hadn't, so it's like, oh, I have to sit on that. <laughs> yeah. And then have you seen Serenity? No. Okay. I've not seen that yet. Good. There's something else to at least ruin me trying to tell analogies. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, so, going, so that's like the fourth time I've, like, done that thing. It illustrated the point that my brain thinks in images and movies. Yes. The, the <laughs> brain of... Connect, conversations don't go from point A to point B. They're more like you connect the dots that a two-year-old <laughs> scribbled over in a crayon. You know, some of the dots get connected, but... <laughs> yes. <laughs> so... Oh. Maybe to the correct yeah. dot. Oh, uh, yeah. But anyway. But it doesn't look like a giraffe when you're done. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Anyways, so we have we're at an hour. We, uh, we, we don't have, have any. Hour mark. Yeah, we don't have any questions to answer as usual. However, if you have a question for us to answer, please leave it in the comments below. And I'm going to do the credits now. The show's written by myself, hosted by me and my roommate Eric. Um, this week in science, provided by IFLScience.com. The holiday of the day, except not this time. <laughs> And this day in history provided by just looking up the date on Wikipedia. I know, right? The nerd joke of the week is, I want to say, number file. Foreign phrase of the week is omniglot.com. And our punctual show for is Willie Make It. So, yeah. so sorry, were you done with the credits? Yeah, I'm done with the credits. Okay. When I do the joke one, they're over. <laughs> so here's a nice little wrap-up topic here. I was, like, glancing at the screen, like turning my head slightly and like glancing to the left and I noticed that the the uh what would you call that uh line that the um, the one with the little audio spikes yeah the audio uh what do you the spe the spectrograph for, for the audio recording look at us whipping out our three syllable words I <laughs> I think I I think that's the term for it, or at least something close to it, something along those lines. Audacity users know what you're talking about. I think most people do. Otherwise, <laughs> you know, Google. Um, but yeah, I glanced to my left, and I'm like, hmm, that color is rather inconsistent. The left is rather um, like a deep blue, and the right is like a not very deep blue, like a lighter blue. And then I realized, oh wait, that's just crud on my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say you're not viewing the screen at not angle. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, then I realized, oh, wait, crap on my glasses. Eric, clean your glasses. <laughs> Listeners, have a nice day. See ya. Take care. <laughs>